Alright, threading um, this Elna Supermatic is a little different than, than most machines and I'll, I'll try to walk you through it. One of the things that's different is the thread's going to start back here in this guide. It's going to go down around the bottom of the machine. Now right here is the tension adjustment, one through nine or, or zero perhaps, zero through nine. Um, Anyway, one's the least amount, and nine is more. Now we'll uh, go through this guide first. It's going through this guide on the back. Now it, it goes under the bottom. There's two paths it can take. This machine is capable of double needle. If you're doing one, I, I don't think it matters which one you choose. If you're doing two, you better put a thread in each one. Now, there's a bar on the front, just above the tension discs. And you'll go up under that, under that bar. Now the take-up lever, you'll go from left to right. Then you'll come back down you go through this guide. Then there's a guide at the bottom of the needle bar, top of the needle, bottom of the needle bar. And then you go through the needle front to back. So I'll explain some features of the case of this machine. It's somewhat unique. Everything is contained in the box. Here is a, an accessories box. It has all the cams and some of the basic tools, extra bobbins. I'll remove the machine and set it aside and we'll focus on the box. Uh, here's a place to keep your power cord and the knee bar which operates the machine. These brackets hold the machine down against the bottom when it's closed and the feet set in these divots. The case also has rubber feet, there's eight of them, and that keeps the table from sliding around when it's used as a work surface. Now before you use it as a work surface, you clip this down so that when you flip it over, uh, that won't fall down into the way. And you can see it's an easy process to just fold it and move the machine into place. And now your case is a work surface. This machine has an assortment of cams. To change them out, you place the zigzag stitch on zero, and then you can pop this disc out. Uh, here I've selected another disc. This one has two layers of um, control on it. So if you put this switch into automatic, and I've got the zigzag on full wide, you can see here that the material actually moves forward and reverse in order to accomplish the stitch that this disc um, is set up for. Pretty interesting. I selected this one to show because uh, I think it looks like ducks. Now I've sped this portion of the video up it does take some time, but uh, a machine like this with needle positioning forward and reverse can sew a buttonhole manually. Now I marked uh, my sample and uh, I start with the needle on the left and I go reverse and then I center my needle and widen the stitch and do a tack 
And now I've got my needle on the right and I've stitched the other side of the buttonhole and then recenter my needle and do the final tack. And there you have a buttonhole. And now I'm just lining it up to cut it. I've changed the foot to a shirt hemming foot and uh, I've just done a short sample uh, to show how the foot works. It's hard to see here so I'll show you a photo. Thanks for watching.